Hello and welcome to the Catholic Mama y'all here on YouTube and this episode of Hearth and Homeschool. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about enjoying uh, your spouse and weekly at home date nights if perhaps getting a sitter isn't um, is it possible. This all started in our family back during quarantine. We uh, amazingly and beautifully and, and much better <laughs> that I had originally thought lived two blocks away from my in-laws. And it has been a real gift to have family that close. It's one of the reasons we moved from Pennsylvania to Wisconsin was so that we could be closer to family, especially at the time we were expecting baby number four and realized that we needed a little bit more elbow room, get off the east, the northeast corridor and, um, and also be near family. So, uh, but as great as it is to have family that close by and as much as they have been so wonderful and babysitting our children so that my husband and I can go on dates last year during quarantine, we just weren't unable, we were in, unable, excuse me, unable to get out of the house. But we also didn't want this, um, you know, this special time with each other to disappear as well, because especially in those stressful times, we knew that we needed to um, band together even better as a husband and wife. And the way you do that is, is one of the ways is through quality time together. So um, we started instituting these at-home date nights. Now we've been doing it for about a year and a half and um, we do it once a week. I, I don't think we've really missed a week unless we've been traveling. Uh, the children have gotten used to it at this point. When we first started, my oldest, our oldest was um, six, I think. And then so on down to, to baby. Um, and uh, so anywhere between six and baby. <laughs> and uh, it, it, as the children have now gotten used to, oh, you know, Tuesdays, we've had to move the days a couple of times just because of various activities and, and, you know, children's programs and things that we have going on on certain nights. But we try to keep it consistent. It's recently been moved to Tuesdays <laughs> and now it's consistently on Tuesdays. But the kids know, okay, Tuesday nights, oh, it's, it's date night for you. And um, and we've set the, the expectations and we've been so consistent with it that nobody ever fights with us on it. Um, and uh, they, they just understand and they go to bed early, <laughs> which is awesome. So I know this may be difficult if you have children who don't go to bed early. Even if you don't have kids though, I, I would imagine that having these at-home date nights would actually be uh, beneficial. Uh, for us as parents, uh, not having to look for a babysitter, not having to spend the extra money on eating out. I mean, all that stuff is is really helpful for us. Um, you know, we have four kids. We own our own business. We can't just um, throw money out the window all the time. As much as I love to eat out, I do love to cook too. So this, this works out. However, I will say if you don't like to cook at home, you could always just order takeout and bring it home. That's another option. But so how we do these at-home date nights, no babysitter required is one, we set a night every week that works. Again, that's changed for us over time. I think if we started off on Tuesdays, it went to when or Thursdays, went to Wednesdays, and now we're on Tuesdays. Um, so here we are. Tuesdays seem to work well for us. Um, so we pick this consistent night. I plan out my, all the meals anyway for a week in advance on Tuesdays. Um, I look forward to the following week and I plan breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for everybody just because it's just easier that way for me. I'm, I'm, hyper I'm a hyper organized type person in some respects, not all, but for meal planning, that's my bailiwick and I like to do it. So I plan out the whole week of meals and I include our date night dinner and on the little box, cause I, I hand write everything on the little box. I write D and D date night dinner. And I put what my husband and I will be eating. And then I put kids and I write what the kids are eating for the kids. They think this is great. It's like breakfast for dinner or something, or hot dogs, things that I, do, I wouldn't normally feed them. I uh, tend to not make, you know, quote unquote, kid friendly dinners. I like to cook, so they're going to eat what I eat, what I like to cook. And it's, it's usually more mature palatey type things, I think. But, you know, I modify it for them. You know, we, if I'm going to make something that I know that they probably won't like all the ingredients in, I see if they can break it down and make it separate parts and they can add in and, and kind of DIY their own food. It's very millennial, right? A very hipster <laughs> deconstructed salad or whatever. Um, and so I, I feed them something simple that um, that'll, it'll feel exciting for them to know that we, we've, they're getting something special that night that we don't usually do for dinner. And then my husband and I, I, I reserve um, certain recipes that might have a more expensive cut of meat or may have ingredients that I really know the kids aren't going to want or have a really high spice level, something like that, where um, the kids wouldn't normally eat it, like it, um, 
or I just, it would be too expensive to feed everybody, whatever, whatever steak or whatever it is. And so I uh, schedule those meals. And I usually, those are ones that might even be experimental too. The ones that I've been looking to try, but know that nobody's going to eat it. Otherwise, um, a couple of months ago, I made ricotta blueberry lemon pizza for one of our date nights. And it was surprisingly good. The kids hated it. I saved some for them the next day and they hated it. So uh, my experiment was good for my husband and me, but the kids didn't like it. And then I usually make some kind of small, but different dessert. And the kids know that they are able to, if there are any leftovers, that they'll have the dessert as a treat the following day. So there's some kind of incentive to um, listen to this whole and like this whole date night thing for mom and dad because they get the dessert the next day and they also get a dinner that they normally wouldn't get. So first trick there is to meal plan. Pick out the dinner that you're going to give to you and your spouse. Pick out a really easy dinner for your kids. And then as much as you can, prepare early. Get the dishes done early. Um, I try to chop up everything that I need to chop up, get it set well before dinner time so that I'm not in the kitchen doing the heavy lifting while I'm supposed to be on this date with my husband. It also means that I'm not cleaning dishes at seven or eight o'clock at night, which I don't like to do anyway. So I get everything ready, prepped, and dishes done. I might even let the kids eat off paper plates, you know, just make it as simple as possible. The kids don't care. They're, they, and, and it, it's all good. All good. So keep it as simple as possible for the kids prep as much as you can ahead of time for yourself. Then, uh, the kids understand because we've been doing it for so long that they have to go to bed early on date night. And we are early risers, early to bed, early risers anyway. So it's, it's natural for us. You know, if that's not your family, you'll have to figure this out in a different way. Um, but the kids go to bed early and for the older ones, even if they're, it's a little too early for them to go to bed, um, they don't have to go to sleep, but they do have to stay in bed and they can't come out. <laughs> so if they, they can get books and water and uh, post up with a little nightlight and read by, by flashlight if they would like, but they ain't coming out of their room. That's, that's against the rules. So we get the, everybody to bed early. Littles go to sleep early. Bigs can stay up, but in their rooms only. My husband and I have a nice meal that I've prepared as much as I can in advance, gotten most of the dishes done in advance. And then as far as entertainment goes, we uh, decide ahead of time what we're going to watch. So there's no uh, aimless scrolling around trying to figure out what we're going to watch or what we want to, uh, what game we want to play or anything like that. We, we pick ahead of time what we're going to do. Uh, I know that there's some uh, like date at home, date night, like monthly subscription boxes. I, I, I've seen the ads for those. I don't know anybody who's used them and I've never have. So I can't say that that's a good idea, but maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, if you and your husband really don't have anything in common that you like to do in the evenings besides watch TV, that's okay too. Just figure it out ahead of time and enjoy that time together. And then of course, make sure that this isn't being pushed off so late. Um, enjoy that marital contract with your spouse. Uh, leave time for that. That's very important. All in all, you know, I, I may make a more expensive uh, recipe for me and my husband, um, but it is much cheaper than a date outside of the home, but it does feel special and it, it changes the dynamic of the week. It makes us look forward to something, makes the kids after over time, they just get used to all of this. So they don't fight us. They, I, don't, I don't think they've ever fought us on this. Um, we did start when they were kind of young, but, but they understand. And we make a point of when we say, oh, it's date night. We make a point of saying, oh, isn't it great that mom, that we get to spend time together. It's so important for mom and dad to spend alone time together. You know, we're the, we help to, we're, we're the foundation of the family or something like that. And we make it sound good and fun and wholesome. And also, again, they get to have any dessert that's left over. So we've, again, we've been doing this for about a year and a half. It's been great. Um, you know, I don't feel, I look forward to at-home date nights pretty much the same as I look forward to going out when we have a babysitter. And my in-laws, now that quarantine's over, they're able to watch the children again. But even that, I mean, I, I really enjoy our at-home date nights. Um, if cooking is something that's really laborious for you, well, you just order takeout, do something simple for yourself, just make it fun. Um, and plan in advance as much as you can, prep as much in advance as you can, prepare the children. We actually always, our kids will probably be terrible road trip partners when they're older. They always fall asleep in the car. So we take the kids out on date nights in the car and we do a driving rosary. And by that last mystery of the, of the evening, the two smaller ones are fast asleep and they will stay asleep when we carry them inside. So <laughs> we did good on that one, at least for us. Again, future road trip partners are probably going to hate that. 
but anyway, it's, it's been working great for us. And I really hope you give it a try. Um, commit to it a month. I, I don't think that's, you know, four nights out of a whole month. I think you can commit to that, uh, plan it in advance and, uh, and, and let me know how it goes. I hope, I hope you enjoy it. I certainly do. It's been a wonderful time to have with my husband and it does feel special. Uh, and really, uh, the husband and wife are the, the foundation of the family. And so that they need to be strong, as strong as possible. Uh, and, and sometimes I know it can be so hard for moms. We pour so much energy into our children. We need to keep a little bit, you know, in reserve for our mental well being and our physical health. How much are we giving? What's left for our husbands? And one way to give more back to our husbands and back to our marriages is by creating this simple um, and not stressful tradition each week that we can enjoy with our spouse. All right, everyone. I hope that's helpful. And until next time.